Hey everyone, it's Andrew and welcome back to the channel. The iPhone 14 Pro has been out for six months now and I wanna share some things like battery health, wear and tear, what I think of Dynamic Island now that I've had a lot more time with it, the overall performance of the device and whether I think it was worth it or not. Let's start with wear and tear. I decided this year to go without a screen protector. I have gathered quite a few scratches on the screen. Nothing that's overall damaging to the display or anything like that. In lighting and certain lighting conditions, you can see the scratches. It's not too bothersome for me since I do have Apple Care on this device. But yeah, the screen taking some scratches with that ceramic shield that's on there. But overall, I think it looks still pretty good. Looking at the bezels, they are holding up really well. You can see some scratches on the bottom where the charging port is, but if you only use MagSafe, you really wouldn't have to worry about scratching that with your charger. The back of the device is perfect and I've acquired no damages on the camera bump or anything like that. Thanks to Apple cases that I've used this year, it's kept the back of my phone perfect. I swap weekly between the clear case, leather case, and silicone case made by Apple. I recently got all the spring case colors, so check out that video if you're curious. But I'm really loving the sky and olive color options that they provided this year. And these cases have always worked great for me, and I really like them. One thing I have noticed is the space on the front up at the top, it kind of collects dust in there as well. It actually looks kind of ugly in my opinion. If you can find one of those computer dust cleaners to clean that out, I would recommend that. Two things to note as well, it's really hard to keep the camera bump clean and free from dust particles. I've actually had a few people ask me how I keep it clean. I take a little alcohol swab and wipe it with a glasses cloth. My Warby Parker glasses came with this cloth and I use this to clean my iPhone every couple days. Now let's move on to performance and I would say performance has overall been really great. I recently ran the benchmark six score on it to see the results. I'm overall pleased with the device's performance. The A16 chip in here is a beast and I don't really game a lot, but if I did, I could be able to play any game on here just fine. Things like watching YouTube or a movie on here, it performs great. And overall, it just accomplishes any task that I need it to. It actually scored higher than the S23 Ultra that recently came out which is actually really, really good to see in terms of performance. Something that still though isn't really great for me is the battery life. I thought by iOS 16.4, which is coming out soon, I'm currently using the beta, that this would be a little bit better. And I don't know what it is about the iPhone 14 Pro, but the screen on time just isn't that great. I find myself constantly on the way home having to charge it even like by, you know, middle of the day, like let's say 3.30, 4.30, my iPhone is already getting towards 20, 15%. Now that can vary depending on my use, but that really makes me regret not getting the 14 Pro Max. I've heard that it has great battery life and I much would have preferred that. Even though I like the size on the 14 Pro, I would rather have a better battery life. Now, in terms of battery health, it's still doing pretty good at 97%. I'm not really concerned about that. I know that like tech Twitter makes it a really big deal or even on YouTube, it's not a big deal. The device is gonna last me years. Now, if you remember the biggest feature announced on the 14 Pro and the Pro Max was the new dynamic island. And if you're like me, I think a lot of people were blown away by the cool animation at the event. While I don't think it's a gimmick and it's useful in some cases, like I used it on a flight where I was transitioning gates and it actually told me how much time I had left before my other flight was about to leave the terminal. You can actually use it for live activities, you can use it for Uber. What I think I'm waiting for is I really want to see massive adoption from other applications as well. I think with all of the 15 series moving in the direction of Dynamic Island, we could see this happen where other third-party apps just start implementing it and doing cool stuff with Dynamic Island. 
When I first initially got the device, some of you asked if the always on display would bring burn in to the screen. And obviously I didn't know because this is the first iPhone with an always on display. I would say the display is holding up really well. And unless someone else can tell me in the comments that I do have screen burn in, I can't tell. It still looks brand new to me. It looks great. And it's overall been holding up really good and I personally have the always on display on I really like it it's very useful for me especially in the shower just being able to look and see what time it is I actually really like that but overall I like the always on display and I haven't experienced any screen burning also the display is just insanely good with the 1200 nits peak brightness outdoors and also just being able to put it all the way down on the brightness levels and in the dark, just being able to clearly see the phone, it doesn't get too dim and it's not too bright either. It's just perfect. Now the camera has been great for me as well. I will say with video recording, one thing to note, I've used it for recording videos here on YouTube. And some of you have mentioned the brightness levels when I film in HDR. That's also for the 13 Pro, but regardless, I've turned it off. I'm not sure what the deal is with the HDR brightness levels and the oversaturation, but I haven't seen Apple address it at all. But overall, the iPhone takes great pictures for me. 48 megapixel camera has been really good. I especially like the 2X zoom, not only for taking photos, but also video as well. Whenever I just take pictures of other tech stuff or things I'm doing for shorts or anything like that for content, it's also really good as well. Last few things, the speakers are still working great as well. They're holding up. I haven't had to use satellite connectivity feature. I haven't had to use the crash detection feature either. Both really great features that I hope you and I never have to use. The iPhone 14 Pro's price is still really high, which I haven't really even thought about. It's really high in the US, but the more I'm kind of engaging with other people outside of the US, I didn't realize how ridiculously highly priced the iPhone actually is. It may be worth just to wait to see the price go lower on the 14 Pro when the 15 is announced. I can say though, like when it comes to features like Dynamic Island, the display, the always on display, if you have the 13 Pro or even the 12 Pro, maybe even the 11 Pro, it's probably not worth it to upgrade. Now, if you have an iPhone 10 or 10R, or even the 11, just the regular 11, I think you'd appreciate all the updates that come with this device. I plan to do within the next week or so, the full review of the S23 Ultra. I also have my review for six months on the Apple Watch Ultra. So I'd appreciate if you guys subscribe. Thanks for watching, God bless, and I will see you on the next video.